Hey, welcome back to our study in the book of Philippians. Let's read it today. Verses 15 through 18 is our reading. Let's look at it and then we'll think about it. Some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and in this I rejoice, yes, and will rejoice. So Paul knows something that you and I should know. Paul knows that he is appointed for the defense of the gospel. You and I, by the way, it's not just apostles, right? It's every Christian believer. You and I, we are both appointed for the defense of the gospel. We'd better be finding out what that gospel is. Some here are preaching Christ with full sincerity and, and intensity. Some are apparently mocking and making fun of Paul's beliefs, and that doesn't bother Paul. Some people are trying to add affliction to Paul's imprisonment. Paul's not afflicted, by the way. He's not made more unhappy when he hears them mocking Jesus. Instead, he says, you know what? God is going to use all this. God is going to bring this. And when people mock Jesus, some people will hear that and say, hey, that's, that's the wrong spirit. And some people will be influenced toward the spirit of God instead of against. So Paul's rejoicing that Jesus has preached. Are we too quiet? Are we not preaching enough? Are we not talking to people about our belief, our faith in Jesus Christ? Paul says we should be glad when it's talked about, even some who take it maybe in a very mocking way. We wouldn't mock, but if somebody else does that, God's not going to let that fall down. God's going to bring good things out of, out of the presentation of his truth. So what lessons here? Again, to be bolder, to not worry that if we speak it, don't speak it just a certain exact way, it's a bad thing. We need to be faithful and we need to be presenting. We need to be talking to people about Jesus, not just one day a week, not just two days a week, not just on the day we come to prayer meeting and the day we come to church. We should, we should watch for opportunities. And you don't have to give somebody, you know, a three and a half hour presentation. You, can, might, might, you might have 30 seconds or 20 seconds or a minute and a half. We can say something to encourage somebody and turn them toward the word of God. Hey, why don't we pray about that even now? Dear Father in heaven, we want that people will hear about God, people will hear about your kingdom, and people will have some opportunity to have their mind turned toward the things of truth, the things of Jesus, and your sacrifice for man. Bless us, we pray, Lord. Help us to be right. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you that even in Paul's chains, as people mocked him and made fun of his faith, Paul didn't lose his spirit. He didn't become tight-lipped and, and scrunchy and, and negative. He was just glad that he knew your spirit was working and would work even when your name is mocked. Bless us, Lord, and may we speak the word with love to others. In Jesus' name, amen. You and I are appointed to the defense of the gospel. Hey, today maybe God will give you an opportunity.